and welcome to this evening's performance of the 55th Annual Winterfest, held in Mills Theater, home of the home of Broad Institute's COVID-19 Rapid Testing Center at Baypath University. Happy Holidays! So, Winterfest is... Cancelled? We need to save Winterfest. Absolutely, totally. But how? Oh. Um, Bob, what's that? What? Over. Yeah. No. No. Colder. Colder. Yeah. No. Colder. Here. Cold. Still. No. Yeah. Oh. That. <laughs> is that? That, said a voice booming down from beyond, is a barometer, boys. Think of it as a wand that gauges the merrier, the cheerful, the zest that's needed to pull off this year's Winterfest. It's looking quite low, so don't wait. Start to yelp, because pulling this off means... We're going to need help. All right, y'all, we have no choirs, no dance ensemble, no actors, no singers. How can we uh, put on a Winterfest? Oh, no. We do have that brrrrometer. Uh, what is that? It's a barometer, girl. Think of it as a wand that gauges the merry, the cheerful, the zest. That's needed to put on this year's Winterfest. Huh? Yeah. So what is it? Well, <laughs> can't try it. it tells us if we've achieved or done enough or had a successful Winterfest. Right. In the past, we've filled the barometer with performances by Corral, the page singers, dance company, and speakers from the community. Oh, okay. So, yeah. 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 Wait, but you said we don't have any choirs this semester. Or a dance company. And we couldn't do a fall musical. So how are we going to have a Winterfest with no performers? Wait, what, what if we redefined what we mean by performance? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I think I get what you're trying to say. You don't have to be in an ensemble or a production to make art. You don't have to be in a class or have taken lessons either. Everyone can make art, and we do. We make it every day. All of us are artists because being an artist means being creative in whatever way is available for you and feels natural to you. That's it, right? So, so while in the past, Winterfest has showcased the talents and abilities of those students enrolled in performing arts ensembles, this year we can shine the spotlight on the artistry of the everyday and the commonplace. The things that we all do that we may not even realize are creative or artistic. And then in the process, we can share perspectives, we can share stories and performances, you know, whatever that may come to mean from the entire Bay Path community. Y'all, it could be like no Winterfest that Bay Path has ever seen in the 54 year history of the event. All right, all right, let's break out and let's brainstorm. How can we get the entire Bay Path community involved? The wheels began turning and groups quickly formed who asked far and wide for help sailing this storm. Together they banded these doers and dreamers, our founding, hard-working, Winterfest interveners. Back in the workroom with Winterfest Wraith, two of our heroes, Rochelle and Dear Faith, were deep in their thoughts on the ways that the arts have helped us these past months to jumpstart our hearts. Hi, I'm Faith Regeria. And I'm Rochelle Wagner, and we care about showing art, which is why we created this project. The idea behind the project is to show not only the Bay Path community why art is important, but the world. 
We would love to thank the incredibly talented people who submitted their art to this project. Now please enjoy the collection of Bay Pass art. That was pretty rad. Who knew there was so much talent in the Bay Path community? Yeah, and I bet there's even so much more that we can highlight, showcase, and elevate. Hey, let's check the barometer and see what progress we've made. Nice. I guess oh. we're moving in the right direction. Hey, let's keep working to save this fest. If there's one thing we know, it's the power of snow and how each tiny flake is distinct in its show, which is why Aaron, Tina, and Rochelle have decided to snow off the ways we're unique but united. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Harlow. I'm in my second year and I joined this project because I love the creativity in making paper snowflakes and that everyone is able to make their own design. Hi, my name is Tina Conley and I'm a second year OT grad student at Baypath. And I joined this project because of how Baypath has helped me discover my true self and what my passions are. Hi, my name is Rochelle Wagner and I'm a first year at Baypath. And I just joined this project because I love the unique aspect of every snowflake and every person at Baypath being different. I own my now by taking all the opportunities given to me. I'm unique to Bay Path because I have a large leadership impact. I am empowered, organized, successful, and dedicated. I would describe myself as thoughtful and dedicated. Own Your Now is taking charge of the day and doing what's best for you. Carpe diem. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. This is how this we owned our now. This is how we owned our now. This is how we owned our now. See you next semester. <laughs> <laughs> My words will carry us from Africa to Jamaica to now with the inspiration of my grandmother, Miriam Kirkaldi, who taught me to believe that stirring the pot would prepare me for the world to come. Born and raised in Jamaica, West Indies, my grandmother, also known as Nanny, 
emigrated to the U.S. in 1917 via Ellis Island and settled in New York City. Over the years, she traveled back and forth to Jamaica, visiting her beloved birthplace whenever she could. There, her great yard of fruit trees and herbs became a secret garden where God's instructions for living, working, loving, and praying were cultivated and harvested. With the warmth of the rising sun, Nanny rose to her own highest expectation of getting the pots going in the morning and igniting the flame that would heat them forever. She was a God-fearing woman who lived through many tragedies on many shores, always moving forward with the hope of God's tomorrow. Long before her hand touched the big spoon, Nanny's faith was already stirring the simmering pot. Remember, God is in control. Nanny had a strong yet loving face, honey brown with eyes that changed color with the sky. Her spirit showed us that work was love if you really wanted to do it for people you care about. As she cooked, her hand seemingly to carry God's grace as she managed the flame, stirred with precision, and occasionally stood back to enjoy the fragrance of the root vegetables or stew meat. The way she stirred her pot was a rhythmic reminder to stay focused with precision and maintain the beat of a warrior's drum and the work of the day. Nanny stirred something in anyone who was around her. Her hands of discipline and purpose taught lessons as she shelled peas and other great, great disciplined activities that she would find around the fire. Nanny would say, keep your house and heart clean by helping others so that you can welcome all that is good with God. All her stirring made me see that the workplace was a house like any other that needed to be in order. Thanks to her, I walk into every workplace like it is a spiritual experience and a test of faith where you enter feeling that the Lord is trying to show you something and you leave hoping that your God-given talents have been put to good use. Nanny's mama from Sierra Leone, Africa, used to stir like the waves of the oceans, as Nanny would tell us, that brought her to Jamaica as well. Generations later, we still feel the waves all the way from Africa to Jamaica in the smells and the swells from the pot as it emerges from the flames. Today, I stir my pots with love and think of the ocean and the waves that connect me to Nanny and her mama. I feel the spirit and the wisdom of past generations and appreciate the waves of wisdom to come. We have to be getting closer. It's still not enough. We need to do more. What if we did something a little more upbeat? Like, um, like something, something a little more boppy boopy? Hmm. Like a little holly jolly? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like uh, a little bit more jingly jangly. Then off like a rocket, Bob's brain sockets popped. He knew just who to call for a holiday bop that gets stockings a rockin' and rollin'. The game plan? Call songstresses Maddie, Brianna, and Katran. Hey Siri, can you play Jingle Bell Rock? Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell Rock Jingle Bell Swing and Jingle Bell Ring Snowing and blowing up bushels of fun Now the Jingle Hop has begun Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell Jingle bell rock, jingle bells chime in jingle bell time. Dancing and prancing in jingle bell square. In the frosty air, what a bright time. It's the right time to rock the night away. Jingle bell time is a swell time to go gliding in a one horse sleigh. Giddy up, jingle horse, pick up your feet. Jingle around the clock. Mix and mingle and a jingle and beat. That's the jingle bell rock. Jing, jing, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bells chime in, jingle bell time. Dancing and prancing and jingle bell square. In the frosty air. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Amanda Emmett. had to do something. All right, let's check the barometer. What? How did it go down? Son of a snowman! Wait, 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 wait. I think my screen was mirrored. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh! There we go. That's better. Praise Polly Poinsettia. Woo! But, yeah. You know, looking at it, though, we still have a ways to go. Do you think we're gonna make it? I hope so, Bob. I mean, Winterfest is counting on us. Yeah, well, Bay Path is counting on us. Our moms are counting on us. True. Yeah, but what else can we do? It's true, oh, so true. They were feeling quite blue, which is when their three pals think to thunk, brandy new. Could Caitlin and Emily and Beck take a crack at finding some good that could keep them on track? What are you most proud of in 2020? While that may seem like a difficult and unlikely question to answer, we wanted to take a moment and reflect back on this year and focus on the positives. Even though there have been rough spots and negative changes for all of us, it is important to recognize the victories and the growth amidst these times and celebrate them. With the help of the Bay Path community, we have put together a video highlighting the personal achievements and successes that we've experienced through this past year. So Bay Path, what are you most proud of in 2020? in 2020 and the two that definitely take the cake are teaching virtually for the first time and absolutely loving it and learning ukulele. I am beyond grateful for these joys in my life. During this pandemic I am most proud that I was able to keep up with my hobbies such as painting and I developed a new hobby of making blankets. My pandemic positive is that I learned how to make meditation videos, create and edit them, after being asked by a couple community organizations. And my Bay Path students benefit now too. This year, I am most proud of my crocheting skills that I was able to uh, develop and further improve upon to the point where I was able to make a couple stuffed animals that I gave away to my family. And I was just really proud of myself for being able to accomplish a couple of big projects. I'm proud of a couple of things that I did this year. One of them is not losing my mind completely. And the other, is becoming a certified Zen Tangle teacher. And that's something that I'm hoping to bring to the Bay Path community. This year, I'm proud of practicing self-care and balancing out my time between doing work for classes, spending time with friends, and taking time for myself. In 2020, I'm most proud of myself for making new friends at Bay Path and getting involved in activities on campus. One positive thing that has come for me out of this pandemic is spending more time with my family 
with my partner, Justin, and my four-year-old daughter, Adeline. This year, I'm most proud of all the new friendships I've made and all the old friendships that I've kept. The thing I'm most proud of is the friends I've made. The pandemic this year has really brought us together as a community and family. I'd like to thank our frontline workers and medical professionals for helping us through. Thanks so much. I'm most proud of the fact that even with a global pandemic, I was able to accomplish so much professionally and personally during this year. I'm proud of myself because this semester has been really hard for me and I've been learning how to self-advocate and how to ask for help when I need it the most and not be ashamed of it and I've been bringing my grades up and I've been doing very well since then. I'm proud of myself for finishing my first semester of college and making some great memories, despite having to experience it during a pandemic. In 2020, I'm most proud of being a first generation college graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, Heather Reichgott. We are each other's harvest. We are each other's business. We are each other's magnitude and bond. From Paul Rubson by Gwendolyn Brooks. Kwanzaa was created in 1966 by Dr. Melinda Karinga. It was meant to be a reprieve to the black community after the horrific Watts neighborhood protest, where 34 people died and a thousand people were injured. Karinga founded US, an organization looking to empower and unite the nation's African-American community. Kwanzaa was created as a non-religious holiday that would prioritize family and community while giving African-Americans a chance to explore their African roots. This is primarily why Kwanzaa utilizes different cultures from different parts of Africa in its celebration. The celebration bears a heavy resemblance to the Yam Festival in Ghana and Nigeria, but the text for Kwanzaa is written in Swahili.
Seven principles for Kwanzaa is Kimbo, which means creativity. Karinga defines this principle as to do always as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than what we inherited. Jean-Michel Basquiat was an American artist of Haitian and Puerto Rican descent. Basquiat's art focused on dichotomies such as wealth versus poverty, integration versus segregation, and inner versus outer experience. Mutu is a Kenyan-American visual artist known primarily for her painting, sculpture, film, and performance work. Born in Kenya, she has lived and established her career in New York for more than 20 years. Mutu's work has directed the female body as subject through collage painting, immersive installation, and live and video performance, all the while exploring questions of self-image, gender constructs, cultural trauma, and environmental destruction. Ali was an African-American dancer, director, choreographer, and activist who founded the Avon Alley American Dance Theater. He created the Avon Alley American Dance Theater and its affiliated Alley School as havens for nurturing Black artists and expressing the universality of the African-American experience through dance. Lucille Clifton was a prolific poet and author best known for writing on themes related to African-American heritage and feminist issues. She served as the Poet Laureate of Maryland from 1979 to 1985 and won the prestigious Ruth Lilly Poetry Prize in 2007. Mitchell was an American ballet dancer, choreographer, and founder and director of ballet companies. In 1955, he was the first African-American dancer with the New York City Ballet, where he was promoted to the principal dancer the following year and danced in major roles until 1966. Really in Contemporary women's wear designer who creates statement curve inclusive apparel for women, Anifa Muvamba, who was previously known as a customs and alterations seamstress, has gained a great deal of recognition as the founder and lead designer of Hanifa. Did we do it? Did we save Winterfest? I don't know. Let's see. Nutcrackers. We we failed. Okay, this is definitely not how it happens in Hallmark movies. I guess we have to tell the, the production team. And then came the time when these men, once so sure, had to share with their team they were still lacking burr. And the ometer meant there'd be no Winterfest when out of the sorrow, a soft voice expressed. Maybe Winterfest isn't a one night production. It's a year round artistic creative construction. So fail we did not. It happened, it's here. Made to create and we saved it. Three cheers. They hip their hoorays and with great jubilation, they beamed bright with pride from this great revelation. Winterfest had been saved. It was there all along as it had been for years, there in spirit and song. Bobby and Kevin, contented, settled in with a cup of good cheer, a blanket, a grin, and a feeling that in its now 55th year, the voices of present and past were right here. Before we conclude tonight's Winterfest with a performance of Road Home, our alumni song featuring both current and former students of the Bay Path Chorale, we wanted to take a moment to honor and remember Charles Page, longtime professor of music at Bay Path who retired in 2003 
but remained a steadfast supporter of both our department and the university until his passing late last month.